The primary purpose of the cardiovascular system is to circulate gases, nutrients, waste, and other substances to and from the cells of the body. These molecules need to go through the capillaries into the interstitial fluid and then be taken up by the cells in order to be used. Blood flowing from the heart includes oxygen and nutrient-rich blood that flows from the arteries to the arterioles and then to the capillaries. Blood flowing from the tissues back to the heart is deoxygenated and contains waste. This blood flows from the venous side of the capillaries to the venules and veins. Capillary exchange is the movement of substances between the blood and the interstitial fluid. This exchange occurs through diffusion, transcytosis, and bulk exchange. In this video, we are going to focus on bulk exchange. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa, and this is my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. Before we start today's video, I want to take a minute and ask for your support. If you are finding value in these easy to understand biological videos and want to ensure that they keep coming your way, I encourage you to become a part of our community by hitting that subscribe button. Your support fuels this channel's mission to make biological concepts engaging and easy to understand. Thank you for being a crucial part of our scientific journey together. As we delve into this topic, let's recap and look at the big overall picture one more time so that you understand what we're talking about when we're talking about the nitty gritty. So the heart is a pump. The heart is going to pump blood all over the body and the heart on the ar artery side is going to go from the arteries to the arterioles to the capillaries. The capillaries are the smallest of the vessels and there's going to be an exchange now between the capillaries and the interstitial fluid. This is so that oxygen and nutrients um, and other substances can go from the capillaries to the interstitial fluid to the tissues. The cells of the tissues will take this up so that they can do their processes and survive. At the same time, the cells are also going to be releasing waste, carbon dioxide, um, things that need to go um, out of the body, and that's going to also go into the interstitial fluid, but those things are gonna be taken up by the capillaries on the venous side, where it's going to go from um, the venous side of the capillaries to the venules, to the veins, and back to the heart. So we're really going to be focusing on the exchange now that is going to be happening within the capillary beds themselves, between the blood and the capillaries, and that interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid is going to be interacting with um, the cells of the tissues. The movement of fluid out and back into the capillary beds is going to require a transport system that is more efficient than diffusion. This movement is known as bulk flow and it's going to require two different types of pressures, hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure. These pressures are going to work together to drive filtration and reabsorption. Filtration is the movement of fluid from the capillary bed to the interstitial fluid, which eventually is taken up by the tissues or the cells of the tissues, while reabsorption is the movement of fluid from the interstitial fluid back into the capillary bed. Let's talk about the different types of pressures and how they drive the movement of filtration and reabsorption. The primary driving force for fluid transport between the capillaries and the tissues is hydrostatic pressure. This is the pressure of any fluid in an enclosed space. Blood hydrostatic pressure, or BHP, is the force that is exerted by blood against the walls of blood vessels. Think of the pressure you feel when you blow up a balloon. The air pushes out against the balloon's walls. This is similar to when the heart pumps blood. It pushes blood through the vessels, creating pressure against their walls. This pressure helps move blood through the body, and this is also what we refer to as just blood pressure. Capillary hydrostatic pressure or CHP, 
is blood hydrostatic pressure that we just talked about, but more specifically within the walls of the capillaries. And this is important because we are going to be talking about capillary exchange. So specifically capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is that pressure that is exerted by blood against the walls of the capillary. This is the same as blood capillary pressure. This force pushes fluid out of the capillaries and into the interstitial fluid to be taken up by the tissues. As fluid moves from the capillaries into the interstitial fluid, the hydrostatic pressure within the interstitial fluid rises. The other hydrostatic pressure is interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure or IFHP. This pressure is the opposing pressure to capillary hydrostatic pressure. This pressure is the force exerted by the fluid in the interstitial spaces between cells against the walls of surrounding tissues. We also have two types of osmotic pressures, blood colloid osmotic pressure, which is BCOP. This pressure opposes blood hydrostatic pressure. It pulls fluid into the capillary from the interstitial area. This pressure is created by the concentration of colloidal proteins in the blood, mainly plasma proteins. Interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure, or IFCOP, is a pressure that is due to the proteins in interstitial fluid. This pressure remains very low as there aren't many proteins found in the interstitial fluid and since many of the proteins in the blood just cannot pass into the interstitial fluid. This pressure pulls fluid from the capillaries into the interstitial area. Phew! That was a mouthful and a lot of definitions. But before your eyes glaze over and roll into the back of your head, let's take a closer look at these different processes and how these pressures are going to drive filtration and reabsorption. Now we know that blood comes from the heart through the arteries into the arterioles and then into the capillary bed. And then it's going to go back through the heart, through the venules um, and the veins. So there's two sides to this capillary bed. There's the, arter the arterial side of the capillary bed and then the venous side of the capillary bed. So when blood comes in to the arterial side, it is going to be full of oxygen, full of nutrients, and the capillary blood pressure that is coming in on the arterial side is going to be higher than blood colloid osmotic pressure. So we have two pressures in the capillaries themselves, and then we have two pressures out here in the interstitial fluid. So the two pressures in the capillary are gonna be the capillary blood hydrostatic pressure, and then the blood colloid osmotic pressure are both pressures within the capillaries themselves. The two pressures in the interstitial fluid are going to be the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure and the interstitial fluid osmotic pressure. Okay, so blood comes in to the arterial side and the blood hydrostatic pressure or that capillary hydrostatic pressure is going to be highest on the arterial side. This is going to be the pressure that is going to push fluid from the capillaries into the interstitial fluid. But what's happening is that as that fluid gets pushed out of the capillaries, the blood colloid osmotic pressure is actually going to increase. This is because the proteins cannot leave the capillaries. They stay in the capillaries. If fluid is leaving, there's going to be more proteins in the capillaries and the blood colloid osmotic pressure is actually going to increase on that side. Also, as fluid comes from um, the capillaries to the interstitial fluid, it's going to increase the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure 
because more fluid is going to be coming into the interstitial space. So the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure will actually start to increase as fluid comes into the interstitial fluid. And then the interstitial um, fluid osmotic pressure is going to be that pressure that's in the interstitial fluid. It's not going to be a very great pressure, but it's going to help fluid come out of the capillaries. So we can look at it this way. There are going to be two processes, filtration and reabsorption. And we can look at the arterial side versus the venous side of the capillary bed. And we can say that the majority of filtration is going to occur on the arterial side, and it's going to occur by blood hydrostatic pressure and interstitial fluid osmotic pressure. So the blood hydrostatic pressure is gonna be within the capillaries, that's going to push fluid out. The interstitial fluid osmotic pressure is going to be within um, the interstitial fluid and that's going to help pull the fluid out into the interstitial fluid. Things are going to change as this process occurs and we're going to be able to drive reabsorption because of that change. So reabsorption is going to really occur predominantly on the venous side of the capillary bed and this is going to be due um, to blood colloid osmotic pressure that has now increased because fluid has been lost out of the capillaries. So um, blood um, colloid osmotic pressure is going to help pull that fluid back in and then interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure, which has also increased because fluid has come out of the capillaries, interstitial fluid um, hydrostatic pressure will drive that fluid being pushed back um, into the capillaries. So um, together, filtration pressure is going to be driven by blood hydrostatic pressure plus interstitial fluid osmotic pressure. Those are our filtration pressures. And then a reabsorption is going to occur with blood colloid osmotic pressure and interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure. If we subtract these two, that would give us net filtration pressure, um, and then this can change. On the arterial side, this number should be positive, indicating that filtration is taking place, while on the venous side, this number um, would be negative, indicating that reabsorption is taking place. So we're going to have um, filtration happening, and then reabsorption happening. Now, why is this happening? Remember, nutrient and oxygen-rich blood is coming into the arterial side of the capillary bed. We need to drive this fluid out so that oxygen and nutrients can be taken up by the cells. And then we also need to push this fluid back in because wastes need to be transported um, back out of the body. We don't want this fluid to stay in the interstitial fluid and the cells of the body can't take up all this fluid. Um, so we need to be able to push back that fluid um, back in. So it's important that we have uh, filtration and then it's also important that we have reabsorption. About 85% of the fluid that leaves the capillaries will actually come back into the capillaries, leaving 15% that's going to stay in the interstitial fluid that fluid will eventually be taken up by the lymphatic system, something that we'll cover in another video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope that this helped to explain these difficult concepts. I know that this is something that students really struggle with and I hope that my explanation was clear and concise and really helped you understand the difference between the different pressures and how they work to drive filtration and reabsorption and why that's important. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to put them down below. And um, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Thank you.